Yeah, I'm thing. I'm hoping this goes well. We're just gonna play it by ear. All right, so, you, guys, you guys ready to start? All right, are we doing this? No. No. Oh. Okay. See you guys later. <laughs> right, here we go. Welcome back to another episode of Shoot from the Hip. We've already discussed a host of fascinating topics, some of them provided by your inquisitive minds. Today we will be just as packed with intellectual curiosities. Today we're going to be discussing some life-changing shower thoughts, discuss the best and worst billionaires, and get super hypothetical with some open-ended questions. Never forget that as we talk about these deep topics, we meticulously avoid dwelling on them too much so we can provide you with the best expert opinion. Because as with every episode of this podcast, for all our answers, we just shoot from the hip. Feels good to be back, doesn't it? It's great. Every week. Yes. So I was thinking about this today. At what point in time does, like, when do you become comfortable farting around other people? <laughs> like, it's almost like when do they when do they enter that zone where, where it becomes comfortable? I think we're getting close. All right. That's a good sign. <laughs> I, well, maybe yeah. not. No, it's but, not a good sign. But, because... you know, there's like, there are those people you're comfortable with. And then it's like the then it's like the group where you, you kind of like how do you like, where it's a competition or <laughs> yeah it's 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 kind of a competition but you just you don't know how they're gonna react to it so mm-hmm. you think you're good enough friends with them but you don't know if you want to try mm-hmm. it is that like kind of like in that like third week of marriage kind of deal? <laughs> yeah where you're still trying, that's like it's like one of those do you do you hug your father and mother in law mm, yeah. Like your father-in-law, especially mother-in-law, it's just just hug him. Right? You know what's weird? Or do you shake hands? Because whatever you do, I feel like it sets a precedent for what you're going to do. Well, and when do you do you call them mom and dad, or do you not? That that's a weird thing for for me. It is. I just call them mom and dad. Really? See, I just do I it. haven't I haven't hit that point, and I I don't know why. It's just like it feels unnatural for me to call them mom and dad. Right. Because I've called him Mr. and Miss Grant. Just, just, just give him a shot. See Brent, what Lancer, happens. speak to this, Tom. All right, yeah. So, so as the expert on this, <laughs> yeah. uh, just call everyone mom and dad because they're, if they're a mom or dad, whatever. Yeah. I think, well, rarely is it the case when my in-laws and my actual parents were all in the same yeah. room. Yeah. So the mom and dad thing doesn't really get too mixed up for me no. personally. But – um. It's just easier because everybody else at the at the house is calling them mom and dad, and so I just kind of like jump in on them, like, "Yeah, hey, mom and dad." Which I think one thing that might factor in is how long did you date before you got married? Three years. Three years. So okay. I knew, I I mean, knew like, them yeah. for for three years before we got married, right? And like we dated for like four years, I think. It okay. Was. So I mean, long history there. Yeah. So I, I just got so used to calling them Mister or whatever and Miss whatever. Here's what we need to do, and right it's now. always first name though. Let's put Lancer on the spot. Because Lancer is is single. I like yeah. it. And <laughs> Lancer, let's say that you are going in now, you're 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 gonna get married, mail order bride situation. Perfect. You're going to meet her parents for the first time and say, Hey, I'm the one marrying your daughter. Let's say she's this beautiful princess from um Russia. Iceland. <laughs> Russia. <Awesome. laughs> and um so you're gonna you're gonna marry this Icelandic princess and you're meeting her parents. Do you go right for the hug or do you just shake hands, keep it formal? I think you need to hug the mom, shake hands with the dad, but maybe a bro hug. Like the one arm mm, shake hands like with the bro hug. Like you're gonna arm wrestle. Yeah, yeah. Like, like kind of the thumb hand yeah. slap high five. Yeah, you slap it and you wrap the one hand around. <laughs> one hand pat, around, a pat, pat the back. One pat, yeah. Yeah, you know, keep keep it manly there, but with the other one, you know, a nice gentle hug, maybe cheek to cheek if you're really feeling, you know, special that day. Right. So. Well, one one way I think that you can breach the, um, should we call it the fart zone? The fart, <laughs> the fart zone with people is yeah. maybe what you need to do is just let one rip and then blame it on them. Mm-hmm. And just be like, dude, and make it ah, a joke. Come on, Lancer. Yeah. I mean, I'm in the room. Yeah. Stop. Stop doing that. Now, and it, then play it off on him and just kind of see how he reacts to it and then go from there. Now, let me lay out the advice that I received from my mother growing up. Oh. When it comes to farting in public areas, you just find an old person and you go and you fart by them. <laughs> this is your and mom. Then you walk- yes, my mother. <laughs> yep. So if she listens to this, she'll know that her advice Thanks, is mom. gone and spread to the, you know whoever listens to this. And uh, yeah, no, she Everybody. legitimately says that. So now we fart around her. Oh, <laughs> we love you, mom. Wow, love you, mom. Well, let's uh, <laughs> let's do a little bit of uh, 
shower yeah, let, thoughts. Yeah, let's, let's get into these shower Sorry. thoughts. We've done shower thoughts before. Shower All right, so <laughs> so we have our That's shower so thoughts good. segment that we have done before, and this time uh, we're all going to go through here and uh, give a shower thought that we've had throughout the week, maybe something that we've thought of that was uh, very, what would you say, uh, very intellectual, yep. yes. something and that's really sli- deep. Slightly stupid, but pretty deep at the same time. Right. So it's a fine line. Yeah, right, right. So I got one for you guys, and uh, since you guys are the experts on basically everything, I mean, Correct. we all are. <sighs> this one is is something that actually came up with me this week, and the question is, how do you throw away a garbage can? <laughs> what what do you do with it? What do you do with a garbage can that you need to throw away? It's hard because garbage cans are so useful. Even when you don't want them anymore, they still have a lot of uses. So, like, if you move a garbage can out of the house or out of the kitchen, like, for me, it generally finds a spot somewhere in, like, the garage or another place mm-hmm. to collect yeah. junk. So, like, when was the last time I actually got rid of a garbage can? Probably if it, like, literally cracked and was shattered. Mm-hmm. Right. And then you just throw it in a garbage can. I mean, yeah, like, okay, so if it's a garbage can in a garbage can, the garbage can you're throwing away has to be smaller than the garbage can you're throwing it into. Well, right. generally, when you throw away a garbage can, though, it's broken up, so yeah, it, it fits if, into another one. If you have a big garbage can and you just leave it at, the, like, the curb, they're not going to take it. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you don't leave a garbage can. Maybe just... you just have to burn it. Man. Is that uh, uh, bad for the environment? I was about to say, I think the Green New Deal might have some oh, words to say on yeah. that. <laughs> I think there might be a problem with inhaling plastic that's been burned as well. I don't know You know, you that. might yeah, you like... might be right on that. Here, I got one for you. This, this one, uh, <laughs> I'm not proud of this one. It took a lot of thought. <laughs> How come a group of squids is not called a squad? <laughs> Ooh. Like why is what, what is a, a group of squids called? I actually don't know what a group of squids. Are. I can. I can. How probably, do you know it's not I, called as, a squid? As you're looking it up, I want to take a guess at what it's called. I want to say it's called a cattle. A, a cattle squid. It well, uh, I think like sea lion is like a cattle or something yeah. like that. Because they're all like they're giant cows anyway. Matt, or what, I think they're called cows or something like yeah. that. But anyway, what what are you going to guess it is before Aaron actually finds oh, the a, a group of squid? A group of squid. What would you call it? Tentacles. Tentacles. <laughs> so, techni- so technically, right now, what I can find is that it is called a shoal, S H O A L. But there so is close. a serious petition out there. There's a petition. There is a there is an <laughs> active petition by the scientific community to change the name of a group of squids to a squad. Nice yeah, science Man. doing the real work right there. See, like, that, really that's what we sure bring you that. on shoot from the hip. It's we're changing the world with these shower yeah, thoughts. Absolutely. <laughs> so I got a really interesting one. And this is uh, more of a thought experiment more than anything else, but I guess it's it's a possible experiment. If if you're walking down the street with the Pope like you normally do, <laughs> all the time, and you sneeze, and the Pope says "bless you," does your snot become holy water or you know holy snot or whatever? That's that's from somebody who says I never have good shower thoughts. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. Wow. Um, well, Which you know, would be pretty great because then you could like bless people with right. some holy snot. You could literally <laughs> throw Kleenexes on people. You could probably sell Kleenexes on eBay. Whoa! Don't Dude, they do the that money? already? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you could be like, "This is my snot." Is I don't know. Could you get like validation blessed by the like pope? a yeah. like a letter sign you, from you the pope? You have to sit next to the pope all day, just sneezing, and he always says, "Bless you." Then you sell those Kleenexes. That's but, a business. Can, idea. can you imagine just like? How are we going to sit next to the Pope all day? Can can you imagine the awesomeness of just like, you know, just you're by the Pope, which doesn't seem that awesome to me. I don't really care. But sneezing and then him going, bless you, my son or my child or something like that. (laughs) Well, you know where bless you came from, right? So bless you, I believe, originated with the bubonic plague, didn't it? So the original thing was like sneezing was a sign that you had the plague. And so Mm. people would say bless you or God bless you to like... Try to reverse the like the curse of the bubonic plague. So, so I've um, heard I've heard another one too, where people thought that uh, when you sneezed, your soul became like available to demonic <laughs> on the black market, uh, whatever. <laughs> and so then they would say, "Bless you," because it would reverse the demonic. I guess, uh, yeah. or yeah, I've heard that too, and I heard science to back it up that when you sneeze, your heart stops for a moment, which means yes. technically you died. 
which means your soul left your body for a moment. <laughs> That's, Man, uh, wow. we're bringing all kinds of science Man. and history here with the Shower Thoughts. How about Man. this one? This one comes in from a listener. Ooh. Anthony in Missouri. Shout out, Anthony. He's, Anthony. Uh, he's one of my boys. Hey, Tony. He came up with this. This is pretty good. If you are at a restaurant and you're waiting for the waiter, does that make you... The waiter. <laughs> I like it. That's, um, yes, and it means you tip yourself if you did a good job. Oh, oh that's a great If you idea. do a good job waiting, yeah. or if you wait for a certain... I don't know. Do, how if long you, do if you, have, you wait long enough for the waiter, you get the waiter's tip. Is I was going to say, that works. What, what is the, the amount of time where if a waiter doesn't show up, the tip starts going down? Uh, is there... That was a really loud <laughs> swallow. That was a loud swallow. I apologize for that um, one. Um I, I don't know if there's a set time. It depends because it, it very much depends on what kind of food you're ordering and there, there's too many variables in that. So I don't know if there's a time. Like I'm not going to sit there and like start my five-minute timer like as soon as the waiter walks away. Yeah, but I mean if you're sitting there and it's like three minutes and no one's showed up at the table, yeah, do you kind of think in the back of your mind like, all right, I'm going to have to dock this person a little bit. Oh yeah, I mean those those thoughts start going through my mind, but there's no set time. It's right. it's a it's a feel thing. Yeah it, it, yeah, it all depends on the restaurant too. Yeah, that's true. So if it's like a Ruby Tuesdays, which is disgusting <laughs> and terrible, I mean don't expect anything <laughs> great, right? Right, so, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I feel Unless like... Ruby Tuesday wants to uh, sponsor this podcast, in which we will retract these statements. <laughs> right. Hey, I got a, I got another shower thought that uh, I thought was great, and um, tell me if you guys what you guys think about this. So wireless chargers are actually more restrictive than the typical normal phone charger. Have you ever thought of that? That is true. So your wireless charger, you just you lay it there and you can't move it. Right. You can't use it while you're trying to charge. Mm -hmm. It's true. So yeah, wireless chargers are kind of I don't I don't really I'm not well, I'm you, not a fan you, of them. You know what I hate about wireless chargers? They're wired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me angry. I'm like they they're wired. So what's the point? Yeah, no, I'm, I feel you on that. I, I, uh, the, the wireless charger thing doesn't really spark me as this great innovation. Like, yeah. I, the, I think the best application is in a restaurant where you can, you know, if you're in a Starbucks or something and you can lay your phone on the counter mm -hmm. and it just, you boost a little bit of charge while you're sitting there. But like in your house or like on your desk, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm missing something, but it's not really a burden to plug the cord into my phone. No, no. And like you said, you can pick it up and text with it, and it's going to still charge. Right. Yeah. So I don't, I don't really get the whole phenomena with, um, you know, having a wireless charger, especially in your house. I get the application in a restaurant. Yeah. But yeah. All right. So how about this? If you try to fail and succeed, <laughs> which have you done? <laughs> oh, that's really good. That's uh -huh. a classic one. I think I've I've heard this one before. And I really like it, so I thought we should talk about it. So what were you attempting? You were trying to fail. You were attempting failure. Yes. And you failed. Right. Right? So By you achieve both. Right. Okay? You complete your goal, which is success, but you were also shooting at nothing. You were shooting to fail, to miss your mark, well, and you accomplish that. So you do fail, but at the same point is in it, time. Is it possible to try to fail and succeed? Because if you're trying to fail, then you're succeeding. You're not failing. This just got way <laughs> too deep. We're, we're in a paradox. Oh, here. man. Man. Lancer's really thinking. He's got. Yeah, my, my brain has like steam coming out of it yeah, trying yeah. to figure this one I'm out. I'm seeing okay. some, some sweat beat up on that so, bald head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if, you, if you're trying to fail, but you succeeded in the process, did you fail? Or did you succeed? Right. Oh, man. That's that's tough. I'm going to say that you failed because you didn't actually do what you were trying to do, which was to fail. <laughs> which means you so did you what you wanted to, to fail. do. Yeah, yeah I'm, good, oh. I'm good with that. I'm so good. If, you, if you failed to fail, then you succeeded. Yeah. Okay, I see. I think. I don't know. I think I follow that logic. I don't logic. know anymore, man. I don't <laughs> know. Oh, man. Well, anyways, if you guys got shower thoughts that you want to send to us, you can submit that uh, at Twitter. At, at Hip Shot Podcast. Yes, it does sound like you're literally blowing your hip off. That's okay. At Hip Shot Podcast on Twitter and uh, Facebook. I believe it's www.facebook forward slash. Facebook.com forward slash shoot from the hip podcast. Shoot from podcast. the hip podcast. There we go. 
And uh, you can submit those to us or just, just text us. I mean, that's that's actually easier. Oh, oh, oh. Should, should I mention now? Because I, I think it's worth mentioning. Oh, yeah. We have an Instagram. We're on the grams. Whoa. After much, much uh, begging from you guys, we have a Instagram. And surprise, surprise, Shoot From The Hip was taken. So we did Hip Shot Podcast on Instagram. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Should we just change the name of this podcast? I don't know. No. Okay. I shot my hip podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Well, let's move into um, a little new segment we've got called Dastardly Dilemmas. Matt, take it away. All right. So uh, this segment is a little bit of an open-ended question kind of segment, and uh, we wanted to, instead of doing like a would you rather, we wanted to have some questions that were a little bit more just kind of out there. <clears throat> so uh, with that being said, each of us have a question for everyone else, uh, including themselves, I guess. And uh, they're just completely off the wall. Yeah, so, they're ridiculous. Uh, let, let me go ahead and start. Be our guest. And this one's kind of a would you rather, but it's not. So it's, would you flip a coin if heads meant you instantly receive $10 billion and tails meant you die instantly? Ten billion dollars of death. Would you uh, flip the coin? I would have to say no, only because I. That would be a really horrible reason to stop being a husband and a parent <laughs> for, <laughs> for enough. money. For enough. Well, I think Lancer is going to be the more interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, Lancer, you you probably have like. The I don't know. You probably have less that's like bringing you to make a super practical decision right here. J- just some loving parents. Well, well, <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid, like nothing, nothing really. No, no. Well, I mean, you got nothing to live. Here's for. the thing, guys. I'm going to make ten billion dollars anyway. Like it doesn't matter if I flip this coin or off not. Off of this podcast. Yeah, off yeah. this podcast. Off of you know, like you know, my YouTube channel with like four <laughs> subscribers right now. So, so uh, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pass on flipping the coin. Uh, because ten billion's coming in my wallet anyway. It doesn't matter. If it was, right. if it was something besides death, even <laughs> if it was like, like if you were alive, but let's say you were like paralyzed for the rest of your life, that's a different question. Yeah, yeah. Death is just like, man, I don't even get to, I don't even get to say anything else after this. All right. So yeah. I, I hate to be like, you know, let's change the question, but let's go ahead and change the question to paralyzation for the rest of your life. That's ten billion dollars. A lot. A lot of people are paralyzed. Mm-hmm. Um, if it, okay, so if it was like a really realistic thing, you're paralyzed from like the neck down mm-hmm. the rest of your life. Um, I probably flip the coin. You flip the coin? I okay. think I, I, I think I would. I, I think at that point I would flip the coin as well. There's been plenty of people who've been successful, you know, right. quadriplegics. And, and all, honestly, so. I, it's and flipping it, coins. <laughs> it would be really burdensome. Fifty fifty. It would be really burdensome, obviously, to my family. But, mm-hmm. you know, you there are so many advancements in technology with medicine. I think you can work your way around a lot of that. And honestly, you know, for my occupation, I'm a preacher. So it doesn't affect my ability to actually comprehend and talk. And you know what's really, like, frustrating about this question is it's not like a million dollars but. So it's not like you get a million dollars but you're paralyzed. It's you might get $10 billion or you might get nothing and just right. be paralyzed. I'm a little bit of a risk taker. And uh, my <laughs> wife would my wife would be like, Absolutely not. If the coin, if if the thing was, flip a coin and you get ten billion dollars or you lose, um, ten thousand dollars, my wife would be like, "Yeah, I'm not flipping that coin." Yeah, <laughs> like like wow. there's no way I'm giving up ten thousand dollars. <laughs> but for me, I'm like, "Heck yeah, let's let's do it." Yeah, I don't yeah. care if I'm paralyzed. <laughs> All right, I don't think I'd risk it just because uh, I don't know. I uh, I'll go with less money. That's just me. You don't need, I'm, you don't I'm need okay. much money. I'm okay with what I got. <laughs> I'll, I'll take if you get any extra. I'll take it. I mean, not a big deal. No, no, no. So I didn't. Well, say, I didn't say it extra for you. Now that, get now out that of here. Matt makes me feel like I'm a total loser for flipping this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I am the superior being. All but right. go ahead. All right, I've got a dastardly dilemma for you, and here's my question. It's very open ended. Uh, if all animals could be domesticated, which one would you choose? As a pet, if you can only choose one. Oof. And I have my answer, but I'm interested to hear. Well, you would think, um, just kind of gut reaction, if any animal could be domesticated, what you would choose as a pet? Cheetah. 
I don't know. That's just the first thing that came to mind. I like cheetahs. They're stinking fast. I was going to say, if that thing ever ran away from you on the leash, it'd be it's hard. It's domesticated. I'll just call it back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my dog's domesticated sometimes. <laughs> what yeah. if the cheetah sees, like, the neighbor's impala? <laughs> what, just, what the, why does the neighbor have an impala? Because all animals are domesticated. <laughs> of course. <laughs> just takes off and just wipes it out. All right, That'd be so, awesome. So we, we know from past episodes that I love just fighting massive animals <laughs> and just going at it. Yeah. But I'm going on a different uh, path here, and I don't think this animal is domesticated. So They are now. I, it's, it's about to be. I want a pet penguin. I think nice. that would be pretty awesome. That just a awesome. swimming pool in the backyard mm-hmm. and just hanging out. Yeah. With a pet penguin back there. That would be pretty, pretty slick. I your, feel ho- like... your house would be cold. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was gonna say. I feel like they'd be very particular with like the climate and stuff like that. So I'm I'm going complete opposite spectrum from you, Lancer. I am going, I'm going with an elephant. Nice. And first of all, rideability factor. You're gonna look like a complete uh, boss. That'd be pretty awesome. Riding through town on your elephant. But man, you gotta clean up those. Yeah, you got it, <laughs> everything comes with some downside. You're gonna have some <laughs> huge there, piles. There is no ziploc that can fit that. No, there isn't. <laughs> but I'll tell you this, I'm gonna have uh some property and I'll have a wicked manure uh section in my garden. Nice. So but I mean think about if you need to pick up heavy things. I mean, this thing can literally, like, you could actually Swiss Family Robinson, like, harness this thing and use it to pull whatever. I think they were, like, lifting boards or something up to build their treehouse with an elephant. It's got it's a trunk on it. It's been a long it. time since I've seen or on, read anything you on your Swiss family, Robinson. family Robinson. But, I mean, yeah, it's got the trunk. It can help you lift things. Um, they're super calm. And, and, honestly, they live for, like, 70 years. So you can have this pet, yeah. like, your whole life. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, I'm taking an elephant, too. Yeah, Plus, just, just ma- make sure you never do anything bad to it, because, you know, elephants never forget, so... <laughs> they don't, they don't, yeah, it might hold, it might hold a little bit of a grudge. Lancer, yeah. you got one? Uh, another, another animal? No. Oh, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> sorry. Different question, <laughs> but, yeah. No, no, I, um, so, here is one that, uh, I, it's, it's actually somewhat on the same line as yours, Aaron. Um, what would the world be like... If we frequently had encounters with fire-breathing dragons, I want to know oh, what would man. what our life would be like every day, just driving to work and warm. scary. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> hot. Um, so, I feel like I would uh, very quickly buy stock in a fire insurance uh, company mm-hmm. um, because that would be like number one. Actually, I don't even know. They probably All wouldn't right. even insure. So, I, I have a question for you on this hypothetical. Is this like we have always lived with this, or this is suddenly we I have to live with this? Like, like it's something that's always been around, kind of like a bear or okay. something. Yeah, okay, so it's, it's just not, like, not super common to interact with them, but like occasionally. Yeah, every once in a while yeah. they just come down, burn down your neighborhood, and Sweet. go off. Every and, once in a while they burn down my neighborhood. How often is this? <laughs> See, I, I feel like we would have a neighborhood or my neighborhood, <laughs> just yours in particular. Oh, they just come dang. after you. We found ways to harness all kinds of crazy things. I feel like we could harness this this thing. So, so like, what would be different? Like, how would we like? How would we harness it? How would we get to work? Well, first of all, I think that we would not live in wood houses. That seems a little counterproductive. We'd either live like in cave systems or like underground or something like that. First thing like I would do. holes. <laughs> no, the first thing you do is you 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 go to Walmart. You buy like the three pack of How to Train Your Dragon series. There you go. You bring okay. it home and you start just binge watching that and mm-hmm. taking copious notes. So that or Dragonheart. <laughs> <laughs> so these movies wouldn't be just like fantasy. They'd or, be like no, no, instructional. No, 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 it's right. Yeah, it's, it's instructional videos. Yeah. Secondary question. Does the dragon talk like Sean Connery? Yes, of course. Then okay, of course. then we're all good. <laughs> like or Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, that would that would be challenging. How about man? Be like a rain of fire situation. It, it would. I've yeah. got I've got another one for you. This one this one's pretty broad. If you could live in any cartoon universe, Oof. which would you choose to live in? Um, this is a tough question. Initially, one of my thoughts was. Um, yeah, I want to live, I want to be a Ninja Turtle and, uh, fight crime and eat pizza. Um, how could you, I mean, the pizza on there looks amazing. I, has a cartoon ever made food look so appetizing as the pizza on Ninja Turtles? Oh, you're, it's you're so right. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, you know how many episodes of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles I've seen? I'm going to go with no, zero. Less than one. One. 
Yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it zero? It, it's zero. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, basically, you're a turtle, and you eat pizza, and you fight crime. Right. So right. That, that's, that's what I've heard. That's still pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. But so it's the Lego universe is pretty cool, too, because mm-hmm. you can just build whatever you want. You know? That would be pretty awesome. So my, I guess I'm going to ask a question to you about my question, and it's would, would like Toy Story count? Oh, because uh, that would be super cool. It is technically animation to be a toy living in that universe. Yeah, like that would be so awesome. That would be pretty legit. Like well, p- it, kids play with you. Like it's like you don't necessarily die, right? But then whenever they're done, you live this secret life of your own. But you could end up like the aliens in the uh, in the little uh, fork thing. <laughs> what, what's that thing called? I forgot the claw thing. Oh yeah, where the claw it. game. Yeah, and so you could the claw, but you could also be Buzz Lightyear. That's true. And you could be running around, you know, just having mad adventures. You said Buzz Lightyear, right? Yeah. Because it really sounded like you said Bud Lightyear. <laughs> Bud Lightyear. Bud <laughs> Lightyear not getting the, wasted in it. the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. right. uh, so, so as far as the cartoon universe goes, y'all are choosing, like, somewhat stressful ones, I think. Like, are I would, we? I would want to live in one where there's, like, no crime, no bad things. Something like, like Peanuts. Yeah, like Charlie Brown. Yeah. Charlie Brown would be great. Like, just mm-hmm. low stress. You I was thinking just, about that, yeah. Yeah, nothing. Nothing, nothing really that bad happens there, you know? It's Except pretty... for that every time you would go to kick a football, some little brat's going to pull it out from underneath you at the last minute. Yeah. And you're going to go flying on your mm. back, and people are going to be making fun of you because you're Charlie Brown. But there is the adventure of uh, fighting the Red Baron with Snoopy, so... I thought he goes solo on that, though. He does kind of go solo. You're not wrong. Maybe, yeah. maybe you can War tag along somehow, ace. you know, yeah. be his rear gunner or something. Yeah, I don't know. That's, that is a good one, though. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of backyard kind of sentiment with that. A um, lot of pseudo friendships. And, you know, Charlie Brown didn't have many friends. But, you know, collectively, they all kind of hung out together. I don't know. I just think, like, the fighting crime sort of thing would be – you know, pretty awesome. And uh, especially if you're, you know, a Ninja Turtle or something like that, you have a uh, basic or, or like a Power Ranger. You know, you've yeah. got powers. You, you know, I, I, was, I, I was a pretty big Ninja Turtle fan growing up. And you notice that they had swords and stuff, but they never really killed anybody with them. They, no. they would still just kick them. But they had <laughs> these weapons, but they never really used them. You ever thought about it's that? It's kind of like Batman. Yeah. Like, Batman never really wins. Like, he yeah. never really defeats a foe. Yeah. He just kind of, like, he will subdue them for a period of time. But it's like the Joker always ends up getting out or something like that. Right. It's like he he does enough for people to think he's a hero, but he also doesn't do too much to ensure that he is still needed. Yeah, yeah. He's not like an original, like, Captain America. No, he's not like... Who, who takes out a gun and actually shoots people. He's not Deadpool. Who's just oh, like yeah. literally will, you know, oh, I'm a bad guy who's basically taking out bad guys. Right, right. Sort of a thing. Right, so I got – this This one's a little bit kind of out there I guess, but I, I think it's kind of interesting. What occupation – because I feel like there's a lot of these. What occupation would you not want in the Middle Ages? Oh, man. Yeah, the, the Middle Ages thing is where it hones down in. So I'll, I'll go ahead and kick it off just so that you guys can think about it for a second. I'm going to go with the poison taster. <laughs> that that's um, I mean, can you imagine going to work and is kissing your wife goodbye? Is that literally a job? I'm pretty sure that was a, a responsibility of a particular individual. Yeah. Um, but, like the king's cupbearer, I think, is yes, what it was, right? I believe so. Um, but I, I'm not sure how often that rotated or like if yeah. if it if it was like a like kind of like a squire position, like someone coming up. But regardless, like, can you imagine like going to work that day? It's like, yeah, I might not make it today, but we'll see. That, I mean, but generally, it's okay in the kingdom. Generally, but you get some man. Yeah, that, that's um, that's a that's a tough one. I'm trying to look really quickly here through uh, <laughs> what I think would be challenging. This one right here is just terrible to me. And that would be um, a book binder. Book that just binder. seems like you're not an author. No. Your job is literally to take pages and clamp them together and put yep. leather on the outside. What a monotonous <laughs> job. Um, like I would probably drive myself insane. Well, and you know that it was like an 
arduous thing. It wasn't like yeah, it wasn't oh, like stick you, it in the machine. No, yeah, it wasn't like you have all this equipment like we do today. Right, it's yeah, a yeah. very laborious oh, process. Yeah. So mm-hmm. being a bookbinder would be so boring. And I mean, of all the jobs in the Middle Ages, like you would want to do something exciting. That would be terrible. Now, Aaron, would that be worse than the person who has to hand copy the books, <laughs> like write everything word for word? I don't know. That that may be very challenging. I mean, either yeah. way, you know, that would be like a form of punishment for me because I can get uh, bored really easy. But yeah, the, both of those are terrible. I feel like there are worse occupations, though. When we talk about Middle Ages, I mean, just being a peasant was pretty sucky back then. Yeah, but like, I I think maybe the executioner would be a, a job that I wouldn't be a big fan of. You might have a little bit of PTSD after yeah, that. Yeah, that would be a little <laughs> stressful. Like, like if you only halfway did your job, that was a problem. <laughs> yeah, so. I think there was a story about that. I forget who it was. Um, if it was, it was one of a one of the, um, you know, one of those queens getting beheaded, and uh, they the um, executioner missed with the axe and hit like the shoulders. And so he had to swing oh. again, <laughs> and then oh. jumped around. I was like, "Okay, all oh, right, that sweet." Is, that is Nick. Can you imagine like the blood like hitting oh, you in the face? Gracious. But yeah, you don't kill somebody, and they're like screaming, "Oh lord!" Yep. Oh. So let me <laughs> let me flip that question around the other way. Okay. And let's let's throw us all back in the Middle Ages, and you can choose your occupation. Okay. What are you choosing? A Templar. I, I think – well, and I say that purely from, like, a romantic view of, like, what the Templars were and how they – how the whole, like, knighthood, like, um, sh- the, all of chivalry comes out of that and all of all of the idea of um, honor and glory and battle and stuff like that came from right. the Templars. So, so, Matt, I'm asking for a friend. What is a Templar? What is a Templar? Yeah, the for, temp- yeah a friend of mine asked. <laughs> the Templars are, like, the, the main, like – uh, religious knights of the time, which I, at that point in time, you know, with the crusades and things, they were the guys who had the crosses on their shields, and but they they were like the elite uh, knighthood. Okay, Aaron, what are you thinking you would be? So, I know what I would be. Matt Matt's going for like the like the upper echelon, um, highfalutin warrior sort mm-hmm. of a guy. Mm-hmm. I I'm not that upper echelon warrior, but I am a warrior. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm kind of, I, I'm just a straight up archer. Yeah. Like that, that's my thing. I love to shoot archery, mm-hmm. but get, you, you get, just like to sit in the back of the pack and, you know, fire up and yeah, I'm kind of a sniper. Yeah. I, you know, You're I can see coward. myself, I can see a <laughs> coward. Wow. No it'll be, it'll be, it'll be tough when you got an arrow coming through the back of your neck, call me a coward. So anyways, um, climbing up on a roof, you know, just taking people out. And then once you run out of arrows, I mean, basically their job then was to muck it up. Yeah, you know, yeah. Just, you know, pull the sword out, start whacking heads off. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. not not going to be, um, you know, I'm I'm not the biggest guy. Matt, you can also attest to this. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm quite the as Templar you are a, body. a Templar, um, <laughs> boy, that chain mail and stuff is going to get very heavy after But let me tell you, if, if you've ever gone to, like, the Museum of Art in Philadelphia – and you look at the suits of armor, those guys were like five foot four. Those Midges. guys were <laughs> short, <laughs> man. <laughs> like, it's nuts. Like, you walk, you're like, that's a five foot six knight. I could have been a knight. <laughs> I could have kicked Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's it's pretty insane. Well, and I think a lot of that's because of stunted growth with, you know, yeah. bad... Um, Less nutrition. Yeah, bad everything. nutrition, you know, bad living conditions, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. One, of, one of the jobs that I looked up, it actually says that people were... Um, like rat removers <laughs> on here. Um, nice. Yeah, it actually says there were rat catchers because of the vermin. Yeah, and, um, and the that, bubonic plague. Yeah, and stuff like, like that, that was yeah. a job was to be a rat catcher. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty bad job. Yeah, you're pretty much signing your death warrant getting the plague with that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, you're you're gonna go through a lot of gloves. Or or you have the best immune system out of everyone. The, oh yeah, the plague Probably will never not, get but... you. The plague will never get <laughs> but you. Think, think of how many people will be saying God bless you to you, right? <laughs> yeah. quite, quite a few, including Lance, the Pope. That's true, Lancer. You did not tell us what are you going to be. I would be. I would totally be a wizard. Just like, <laughs> oh, okay. The, the, the magic and you know just just like throw in like mixing, yeah. mixing potions in your uh, yeah just you house. know looking all like old and decrepit and I and believe a they hat. called that kindling. 
<laughs> that you were the first person to get burned. <laughs> yeah, yeah probably, probably. I don't know. I don't know what that means, but whatever. <laughs> so. It would be pretty fun to be a minstrel, just to like walk around with a lute in the castle, just like singing random poems and stuff like that. That's well, like the the jester, which was like the the truth teller of the time, who, right? Who didn't get murdered for making fun of the king, although he did have to make the king laugh. Yes, or else. So you know, there's that, but. All right. Well, that was a, that was a lot of fun. We'll bring uh, dastardly dilemmas back, and uh, we'll move on to our last segment today, which is start, sit, and cut. And this is kind of an interesting game. It's played oftentimes in the sports realm, where we will get three options or three people, and you have to choose whether you're going to start them, sit them, or cut them, like on a team. And um, so, whoever you're cutting is obviously the person you care the least for, and you have your reasons for that. Whoever you're starting. Um, they're going to be the one you have the closest connection to. They're the most important. And then the sit is, uh, they're more the, the bench reserve role. So we're going to do that today, but we're going to do start, sit, and cut with billionaires. And they can be a very polarizing topic. And we have three polarizing men today. Very nice. And we're going to go with Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos is it Bezos or Bezos? I'm gonna go with I don't Bezos. Know. I've heard it both ways, and I was um, I was questioning. We're gonna that go. Myself. We're gonna go Bezos. Jeff, if you're listening and you want to sponsor the podcast, uh, just hit me up and correct us with. Our and feel free to correct us. Yeah, yeah. We'll definitely pronounce your name right yeah. for a small fee. And um, the last one is Mark Zuckerberg, and we're gonna go start, sit, or cut. And I'm gonna throw it to Matthew first on this. All right. So for the start and. I know that he's been in a decent – all of these guys have been in a decent amount of controversy recently. Yes. But uh, I guess most recently we've had Jeff Bezos. And I'm going to start him because oh. I know that he's you know going through the whole divorce thing and stuff like that. But he's been probably the most consistent on the business side of things. And that's why I'm going to start Jeff Bezos. And so when it comes down to Amazon and the Amazon brand – and then the just this all of the uh, the brand backing behind Bezos, he's had such success, and he's he's a good businessman regardless of his personal situation currently. Like his spotlight, yeah, as far as like the whole divorce thing, is not his business side, right? And that's why I'm going to start. So Bezos. are you starting him because Amazon is so important to you, and because you feel like you couldn't go without it? Of course. (laughs) Um, I mean, like, I could get rid of Walmart and just have Amazon, and I would be a happy man. Sure. 100%. Two-day shipping all day long. I could agree. All right. Are we going to go everyone do their start or everyone just go through all three? You want me to go through the rest of them? Yeah, let's try that. Go go through your next. All right. So uh, on the bench, I'm going to put Elon Musk. And now I'm putting Elon Musk on the bench. Um, and not cutting him like I am Zuckerberg, and I'll get to him in a minute. But I'm putting him on the bench because he's the wild card. Elon Musk is the guy who says I'm going to build a, uh, a you know a, um, a track in Los Angeles, and so then I'm just going to dig a hole. And it's, <laughs> it, he just he just starts and he does it. Right. If he wants to do something, he does it. And that's what I kind of like about him. He's a wild card. He he. He thinks outside of the box, and that's what makes him a little bit, a little bit crazy, a little bit successful. Agreed. Um, now the guy that I'm cutting is Zuckerberg, and for obvious reasons, I feel like he's just been in way too much controversy. He's basically a robot. We've seen him give his testimony and Lizard drink man. water, like <laughs> who knows what. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Zuckerberg can just get cut and go off to the side because, I mean, there's just. Too much controversy, too many problems with Facebook, and you know he's got a big brand. He's got a lot of a lot of backing on his business side of things, but just I I don't trust him. All right, all right. So I'm gonna uh, piggyback off what Matt just said there. I will have to agree on the starting with Jeff Bezos. I think his business model is definitely one here to stay for sure, more than the other two. Uh, people always need products. He's figured out a way to get it at a cheap price to you fast. I I don't know of a guy who's maybe whose business has revolutionized things more than Jeff Bezos. And no matter what is going on like with him in the news, Sam Walton. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, yeah, he's like the new Sam Walton yeah, in yeah. a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, even though with all the stuff that's going on, I agree. Like the things that are that are going on with him personally are not going to affect me stopping my Amazon Prime or me getting 
you know, anything uh, like from the internet. I'm not going to change my habits because of you know whatever. But honestly, might be doing. is it is it really uh, okay? I don't want to sound like super weird on this, but it's actually not that much of a controversy. To, yeah, yeah. To me, no. Um, it's really it's really just a back and forth war because he has the the money and he has the resources in mm-hmm. order to fight back where most people don't against blackmail. Now, yeah. I'm not saying I'm not I'm not obviously advocating for what he's right, doing, right. but it's not like he's the only billionaire that's ever that's ever been promiscuous. Yeah, but yeah. he's actually taking the fight public. Yes. And saying, OK, if we want to do this, I've got the power to do this. Yeah. Which most people, you know, that are blackmailed don't have the ability to do. Right. So I actually don't think it's like the most controversial thing that he's in the news going back and forth with. Yeah. Is it National Enquirer? I believe it is. Something like that. Yeah. I think it's a National Enquirer. Yeah. So I actually don't think it's like the most controversial thing. Yeah. Right. So uh, sitting on my bench... A uh, slight amendment to what Matt did. I'm sitting Mark Zuckerberg Ooh. on my bench, mm. and uh, Mark Zuckerberg has been through some controversy, and uh, we were all a little concerned about Facebook there for a while, but I think, honestly, he learned from that controversy, <laughs> and he is going to do better from here on out. <laughs> you uh, heard it here first, America. I, yeah. I, I think I think things are uh, – I, I think Facebook's honestly here to stay. I don't, I don't see it going anywhere. Um, there, there's Snapchat, there's Instagram, there's Twitter, and we're on a lot of these, but I feel like the Facebook is the the, the number f- the one, Facebook. the Facebook <laughs> is the number one. And honestly, the main reason why I'm sitting Mark Zuckerberg is because I really think I need to cut Elon Musk. I oh, feel like out of those hmm. Elon Musk. Now don't get me wrong. Is it I, the marijuana thing? <laughs> it, it actually has nothing to do with the marijuana mm-hmm. thing. I love Elon Musk and what he's done. And the marijuana thing? And the, <laughs> <laughs> no, like, Especially. He, here's the thing. I think Elon Musk is taking on too much at once. Mm, and he is, yeah. he's, too, he's too divided. He's too diverse, um, which being diverse is a good thing in business from what I understand. But I think he's too diverse. He's going to Mars. He's building trains. He's got these solar cities. Got a he's, flamethrower. He's got his flamethrower going on. I mean, he's got some... He's got a lot of stuff going on, but also he just got rid of all of his patents for Tesla. So he just like made them open source to the public. So I'm thinking Elon Musk might be kind of going a little crazy, maybe you know, smoking a little too much marijuana on the Joe Rogan Have show. Have you paid attention to his Twitter at all? It's pretty awesome. Oh, that, yeah. He's some of his Twitter. random junk. He's a great tweeter. He yeah. is. Yeah, I, I love Elon Off as a the person. Wall. But I, I'm, I'm feeling like he's a little bit too of a loose cannon. So I saw one the other day, just real quick before you do yours. Uh, I saw one the other day that Elon posted it was a video of them testing one of their new rockets for you know spacex and he said kind of a flamethrower <laughs> it's like that's awesome <laughs> so i'm gonna go a different direction than all three of you and i'm starting elon musk nice. and this is like the most Aaron choice out of the group <laughs> because if you know me uh I'm I'm kind of a riskier, wing it, fly by the seat of my pants kind of guy. I'm not saying that's a good thing. That's just how I am. And here's my thing with Elon Musk. I do think he is a little um, probably over-diversified right now in different mm-hmm. businesses. But I don't feel like any of them he would be unsuccessful in. <laughs> like yeah. he finds a way, for instance – if I feel like you know what Jeff Bezos has done with Amazon and with literally eliminating a lot of retail um, industry uh, is amazing, um, but I think what Elon Musk is doing in the realm that he's doing it, I th- I think he's got a lot more. There's a there's a lot of different ways where he can grow. Yeah, well, it's kind of like Zuckerberg and Bezos are the CEOs, and then Elon Musk is just an entrepreneur. Elon Musk is. To me, he's kind of an anomaly. Yeah, he's kind of our 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 modern day uh, inventor. Yes, and mm-hmm. so he's he's a little like Bezos and Zuckerberg. I won't put him up there with like Tesla, like some people. do. I'm not going to put him up there but... with that because that technology has already been here. Yeah, but some of the stuff sure. that he's come but... up with is pretty amazing. I know this yeah. isn't like the most crazy crazy headline ever, but I know that he's had more than one meeting at the Pentagon. Mm-hmm. Uh, about SpaceX and a flying suit for people. Yeah, that would be that, awesome. that is stinking amazing. Mm-hmm. So um, I feel like plus Elon Musk is I would feel the most chill 
out of all of them. Like, if there's anybody we wanted to come in here and host a podcast with, by far the number one choice is Elon Musk. He's the most interesting guy to talk to. He's interesting, but he's kind of boring. Have you listened to a podcast with him? I have. Yeah. And I, I, think, <laughs> I think he, the way that he talks. It's like listening to Jack Dorsey do a podcast. I think what he's trying to do is, <laughs> I think part of it is he's trying to dumb down all of his thoughts so that they're comprehensible for the little peasants like us. <laughs> but, um, but he is a really fascinating guy. Yes. Um, I know that if I hang out with Elon Musk, listen, we're going to have some fast cars. Um, yeah. We're going we're gonna to have a lot of fun. We're going to chop it up. Um, yeah, I don't love the marijuana thing. And yes, he, <laughs> he is a little bit of a wild card. Mm-hmm. But I, I do think he is special as far as innovative qualities. And I think that he is, he's the special. Um, <laughs> I just don't think there's many people like him that can mm-hmm. look at, at, at a hypothetical situation and realistically put on paper how it could be done. And um, so for that, for that reason, I'm starting him. Plus, I just I kind of think he's the most fly by the seat of his pants. Let me wing it and I'll just. I'll just put a train under the ground that goes 400 miles an hour. He definitely is the most interesting. And eliminate air travel. And that's what I, that's what I like about Elon Musk. Is he the most interesting man in the world? He he might be. (laughs) It all depends on if his bird baths attract bald eagles. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, he could be the most Mm -hmm. interesting man in the world. Uh, Okay. Moving on. (laughs) Sit. I'm sitting Jeff Bezos on the bench. And the reason for this is because. Mark Zuckerberg is an idiot. Uh, that's the main reason for this. <laughs> Jeff, Be- Jeff Bezos, um, I commend what he's done. Amazon is um, a great company, albeit not perfect, um, but but has done very well. Uh, Bezos ha- has made a, a fortune in that. Uh, I think currently he's – is he number one in the world? I think he's number I, one I definitely in the U.S. I think he might be number one in the world. I think he's over $140 billion or mm-hmm. $150 billion. Yeah. It's some insane amount of money. Um, but so I, I feel like I keep him on the, on the bench, you know, if we go hang out, he's going to bankroll a lot of things. And, um, you know, that, that, that's kind of how I feel about him. I like Amazon as a company. I've had good, good fortune with them. Um, not as interesting of a person, a little bit older too. So not as relatable to me. These are super important reasons, as you can tell, why I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, putting him on the bench. And lastly, I'm cutting Mark Zuckerberg because first of all, you know, kid's a college dropout, and he's spying on people with Facebook, okay? I don't know <laughs> if you guys run into this, but I can talk to my wife about things. I'm like, oh, you know what? We ought to look into buying one of these. Mm-hmm. And she'll be on Facebook later that night, and there'll be ads for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah from, from Amazon, too. It, 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 uh, it happens both places. So... <laughs> so all yeah, I'm that is creepy. Is I'm not going to lie. That's creepy. <laughs> that's a little bit weird. So, Especially if you have, like, an Alexa device. I don't. Okay, so oh, even yeah. without that, it's still, you know, but, mm-hmm. but Facebook isn't really my thing. I understand the importance of it. Yeah. Um, I understand the platform. Mm-hmm. Um, but every time I go, you know, onto Facebook, it's just, you know, people use it as their own little personal blog about their drama and I can't yeah. stand it. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's the greatest platform. Um, I would much prefer Twitter as, as far as social media is concerned. Plus I just, kind of don't like him as a person when I thought when, when he came before the Senate, I thought he seemed very disingenuous and I thought he seemed, I thought he, he acted like he was in over his head when it came to a- actually answering questions. Yeah. And he was trying really hard to not tell the truth. Yeah. And he was trying to act like, oh, I'm really sincere about this and, oh, we're absolutely not suppressing this, that, or the other. But yeah. it, it just felt like a total con job. Have you and, seen the things with him uh, drinking the water? Yes. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, he, was, uh, <laughs> he was a thirsty guy. But uh, <laughs> anyways, I am, I'm cutting Mark Zuckerberg for that reason. Yeah. I just don't feel like we have anything in common. It would be like talking to a brick wall. I want to do a little experiment with us from now till a couple podcasts from now, okay? Okay. I want us to talk about something that none of us have ever searched up online to buy and see if it's ads start popping up. And we're, we're not going to, like, I'm not doing a Google search on this right now. So, like, let's say, for instance, I really want to buy a clock. So just start talking about a clock. And so, like, yeah, I, I need to buy what clocks. What kind of clock? Uh, I need some sort of wall clock, wall uh, clock, something I can put up in my house as a decoration. And let's see if ads. But what, start what if they up. hear that we're talking about this like it's a hypothetical? Then they, oh, they'll man. be like, "No, we're not going to do it." Cause I, don't, I don't know if their algorithms they know. are that sophisticated. You don't know. 
<laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, Mark. Mark could be listening on the line right now, and uh, he'll be like, "Oh, yeah, you know, I uh, definitely don't want to put this up because I don't want everybody to know that I'm really spying on you." So, Lancer's Lancer's buying a clock. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I got to think of something here. Um, I'm going to go with a a desk lamp. Um, I could I could use a nice desk lamp. Uh, I have a very nice lamp in my office on uh, my little. Uh, I don't know, whatever that table is, side table. But uh, could use a desk lamp, maybe something cool, something modern. I'm sure something will pop up on the Facebook feed about, uh, you know, maybe a pretty wicked desk lamp. I had to think of something that, that I don't want or <laughs> never have wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, first thing that comes to mind is a bullhorn. Oh, okay. Because, uh, okay, yeah. you know, I Well, I've got one, one right there. So yeah, in yeah. case you ever um, do need one, you can just borrow mine. But, right, right. But, uh, uh, but I don't want to borrow yours because I want to buy one. Right, right. <laughs> Potentially. Yes, so. yes. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap it up for today. We will be posting uh, at least some of these options, definitely some of these start-sit-cut options on Twitter uh, because Facebook won't let me do more than th- uh, more than two uh, options for a poll. So if you have a Twitter, you better go and check us out at, at Hipshot Podcast and uh, be sure to go over there, follow us, and vote on your favorite options there. Uh, you can also subscribe to this podcast on SoundCloud, which is probably what you're listening to us on. It's soundcloud.com forward slash shoot from the hip podcast. And hopefully, hopefully soon, you'll be able to find us on iTunes because that is in the works. We're waiting on approval for that. Um, so you should be able to find us over there pretty soon. And then also we should be over on iHeartRadio within the next couple weeks. So I've, I've submitted for both of them, and we're just waiting on them, and they take who knows how long. 30 minutes to three weeks is what I was told. So, All right, well, you can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash shoot from the hip podcast. So be sure to go over there and uh, like our page, follow us there, and, you know, comment, like, whatever. And uh, we'll probably have some sort of poll over there, and we'll... We'll make up something for you guys. Yeah. But if you have some sort of, like, would you rather question or some open-ended question that you'd like us to discuss on the podcast, be sure to let us know. You can also find us once, one more thing, one more thing. You can find us on Instagram. And that's Hip Shot Podcast, so be sure to go over there, follow us over there, and we'll try to start posting something because I don't think we've posted anything yet. We will do it, though. Yes, we, we, may, we, we will make absolutely sure we make it happen. So be sure to follow us on Instagram, Hip Shot Podcast. So if you're on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, we're on one of those. So be sure to follow along. Thank you once again for listening to this podcast. We hope to see you next week for the fifth episode of Shoot from the Hip.